Hello and welcome to this edition of Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. Today we not only begin a new book of the Bible, we begin a new series. A New Testament series going from Matthew to Revelation. Only this time, instead of the 30-minute programs, I'm going to do 15-minute programs. So, we begin today in Matthew chapter 1, verse 1. Get your, get your Bible, open it up to Matthew chapter 1. Let's pray and get right into the Word of God. Father, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your Word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. So, the first verse of Matthew, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, and the son of Abraham. Now, Matthew, immediately in the very first verse, mentions two of the biggest Old Testament saints known to Israel, Abraham and David. Matthew wrote this gospel primarily to the Jews. That was his targeted audience. It was important for the Jews to understand that Jesus fulfilled all the Old Testament prophecies concerning the coming of their Messiah. And there were a lot of them. And for that reason, Matthew emphasizes the fulfillment of those prophecies. He, he quotes many more Old Testament verses that point to the coming of Messiah than Mark, Luke, or John did. It was important for the Jews not only to understand that Jesus fulfilled all those promises, all those prophecies, but it was also important in light of that for the Jews to understand that Jesus was the offspring of Abraham, and that's because, as they knew, all the, all the promises of God would come through Abraham and his offspring, the Messiah. Consequently, verse 1 makes it clear that the genealogy of Jesus Christ can be traced directly back to Abraham, also through David. So that takes care of those two big things, in the mind of the Jews anyway. And I'm not going to look at this genealogy, but I did want to point out that it teaches that Jesus is the son of Abraham. That's very important. But for now, we're going to skip down to verse 18 and pick up the story there. So, But I would encourage you to read through this genealogy nevertheless. But let's go down to verse 18. Now remember, this genealogy began with Abraham, and then it went to Isaac, and then it went to Jacob, then it went to Judah, and so on and so forth, all the way down tracing the Messianic line from Abraham, which is where it began, down to verse 18 where we see, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was in this way. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Joseph was not the father of Jesus, as we see from this verse. It says that Mary was expecting before Joseph and her came together. Joseph was not the father of Jesus. God was the father of Jesus. Jesus is called the second Adam in the Bible. And he was like Adam in that the human nature of Jesus was a direct creation of God the Father. So, Mary shows up expecting before her and Joseph ever got together. They're, they're just in the betrothal period or the engagement period, which was very serious back in those days. You, you actually needed a divorce to break the betrothal. But look at verse 20, 19, I should say. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. <clears throat> Joseph loved Mary, so he did not want to hurt her. He did not want to hurt her. He didn't want to go public with this. 
even though at this point he was absolutely sure that she had heard him. You know, Joseph was an average guy. I mean, he was a godly man, but he was a, he was a normal man. He was a godly man, but a normal man. So no doubt he must have been sad and shocked that Mary was expecting a child. And I got to believe Joseph must have thought, I, I just can't. This seems so surreal to me. Anyone but Mary, anyone but her. She's such a godly young woman. How could she do such a thing? He just couldn't believe it, I'm sure. And he'd know nothing right now. He didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit fathering the Lord Jesus Christ. So Joseph was sad. I'm sure he was sad. I'm sure he was shocked. But he was not angry at bitter or bitter. Joseph was not going to make Mary pay, even though obviously to him, she had heard him. At least she thought, or he thought that she did. So Joseph provides us with a good example of what God is talking about when he says that we should be good to those who have not been good to us. And I know it's all in his mind, but certainly you cannot blame Joseph if he thinks that Mary has been a very bad young lady and hurt him deeply. But he's not going to get her back. 20. But while he thought on these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. So, God steps in. In the nick of time, he steps in. And he tells Joseph that Mary had not been unfaithful. In fact, just the opposite. The child that she was carrying was the son of God. Mary had not been bad. In fact, she must have been pretty good. Not sinless, of course, for no one is sinless except the Lord Jesus Christ. But she must have been a godly young woman or the Lord never would have chosen her to be the mother of his son. But think about this. God, the Holy Ghost, created the embryo in Mary's womb. So Mary is still a virgin. Joseph, of course, misunderstood what was happening. But when he discovered the truth, when God spoke to him, he must have felt a whole lot better because, you know why? Because Joseph believed the word of God. That's why. Must have changed his attitude completely, a 180. In an instant, this situ situ situation went from being a gut-wrenching, horribly bad thing to an unimaginably great thing for Joseph. All because... He heard the word of God. His circumstances did not change, but God informed him. He spoke to him and told him what was going on. And that must have been a great relief to him. It's important for us to remember that God can step in and change things from bad to good in an instant. Right when you, th right when you think that things couldn't get any worse, God can step in and completely change things, either by giving us more understanding, which is what he did to Joseph, or changing the circumstances, which is what he did not do for Joseph. But God can do the same thing for us. When we think, and we're sure, life is at its darkest. It can't get any worse than this. It's so important for us to get into the Word of God, to hear the Word of God as Joseph did, because God can either speak to our hearts and change our attitude, give us a different outlook on the circumstances, or he can change the circumstances 
but we need to stay close to God as Joseph was. 21. And so the angel continues the message to Joseph, and she, Mary, shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. You know, the name Jesus was given by God himself. And the name Jesus is the same name as the Hebrew word Joshua. And the name means the Lord saves. Jesus is the Lord God of Scripture. He is the creator of heaven and earth. He came to earth to save man from hell. He came to die on the cross and pay for our sins. The Lord saves. But notice what it says here in verse 21. The Bible says that Jesus saves his people from their sins. He didn't save everybody. He saves his people from their sins. Which means that if you want to be saved, you have to repent and receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become his and he, sa he then saves you from hell. You have his word on it. 22. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. I told you, Matthew was going to quote a lot of Old Testament scriptures, and here he goes, right off the bat. And he quotes one from 700 years earlier, 700 years before Jesus was conceived in Mary's womb, Isaiah the prophet wrote that a virgin would give birth and that the child would be called Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. Jesus was literally 100% God with us. God manifest at first in a tiny little human body, but he was God manifest in the flesh, still is. Jesus is the radiance of God's glory, if you can picture that. He is the exact representation of Almighty God's being. Everything Jesus said and did showed the wisdom, the love, the power, the person of Almighty God. Jesus reveals God to people because at his birth, he became God manifested in a human body. 24. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife. Joseph clearly had faith in God because he believed God and obeyed him. He believed the word of God and he obeyed the word of God. Joseph believed the angel, who was God's messenger, who carried the word of God to him, and he obeyed that word of God. If Joseph, of course, had projected into the future, he might have, he might have thought, who in the world is going to believe our story? about the child being the son of God. Most, if not all, would believe that Joseph and Mary broke the laws against sexual immorality. But Joseph obeyed the Lord and took Mary to be his wife in spite of that, in spite of all the ridicule that they would receive. Sometimes the right things we do look like wrong things. And while appearance is important, it is not as important as obedience. Doing the right thing is more important than looking right. 25, and he knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son and he called his name Jesus. He did not have sexual relations with Mary until after the baby was born. And I'm out of time. If you want to be a part of this ministry, pray for me, pray for God's word. Study the word of God with me at the thebibleversebyverse.com, the whole counsel of God, and when you take a break, click the donate button at the top of the front page at thebibleversebyverse.com and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead.